Hey everybody and welcome back. Well, today we're going to be doing a basketball, we're going to be modeling that in Maya, and if you stick around until the end of the video, I'm also going to show you how to texture it in Keyshot 9. All right, here we go. Hey everybody and welcome back. So we're in Maya 2020 and we're gonna do a follow-up video today that I did a while back where I did a basketball hoop with a dynamic net. And in this video, we're gonna do the actual basketball, right? So we're gonna do the ball in Maya, we're gonna model it, and then we're gonna take it into Keyshot for texturing. Okay, now we're gonna start off with a polygon sphere. That's probably not a big surprise. We're gonna hit Control A to open up to the attribute editor. Then we're going to go in here and we're going to change the subdivision levels to 16 and then in height we'll do 12. All right. Now, we need to change a couple of things on the topology. So we're going to jump to the top here and we're going to right click and we need to get rid of a couple of these edges here. So we're going to right click go to uh, edge and we're going to hold down shift. We're going to select these three, select these three, these three and these the three and let four on my keyboard so you can see which ones I'm talking about. So basically we're gonna leave that cross in the middle, right? We're gonna hold on control delete to get rid of that and there you go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and reconnect those. So we're gonna go into our modeling toolkit. We're gonna to go to our multi-cut tool and we're gonna go from this guy right here to I would say here and then to there, hit enter. We're going to go from this guy to here and then to here and hit enter. We're going to go from here to here and hit enter. And then from here to here and there and hit enter. All right now, <clears throat> excuse me. What we need to do is make sure that the spacing is correct, obviously. So we're gonna right click at a vertex and let's just uh, tweak that a little bit. Let's see. Uh, these seem to be okay. And I mean, you can split it and copy it over and do all that, but you know, it's not a big hassle. So we'll just uh, do it like this. Let's have a look. Did that one go up a little bit and then I think we're good. Yeah. All right, okay, so now we have that. Cool thing is that if we want to do the other side, it's not too complicated because we have a reference, right? Okay guys, so if we hit five on our keyboard, we'll see that we've got the lines there, we've got lines there, all right. Okay, next step, what we're gonna do is we are going to select a number of these edges. So let me do a quick preview smooth first. Let's hit three, yeah, looks good. better okay sorry about that guys all right so we're gonna hit um, control E to extrude we'll do minus 0 0.01 which is good three to preview smooth which is good one to go back and then let's go to enter the edge loop all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one in here close to the edge one in here close to that edge We'll do one right here, close to that edge, and one right here, close to that edge. And then we'll do one here. We'll do one here. We'll do one here. And we'll do one here. Okay. Q on the keyboard, object mode, three to preview smooth, which will give us this, and that's much, much better. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit one to go back and then we're going to go up to mesh and smooth to actually smooth it. Uh, yeah, there you go. Smooth. And yeah, I think that looks fine. So with this selected, we're going to go up to edit, delete by type history. We're going to go to modify and freeze transformation. And then we're going to quickly create a color ID mask for texturing purposes in Keyshot, right? So how do we do that? We're going to right click, go to face. Let's click and double click, click and double click. Yeah. We're going to go in here, click and double click. 
And we're going to take the center two rows for all of these textures. All right here as well. And now that we have all those, we're going to hit shift period to increase up selection. So shift point, if you will. And let's see, I think that's enough. Maybe one more. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we have that. And what I'm going to do now is right click, go to assign a new material. And you can assign anything you want as long as it's a new material, right? So I'll go in here and just change the color just for the heck of it. So we've got one color for what's later on going to be orange and one for what's later on going to be black, right? Okay, so okay, so let's export it. We're going to go to File, Export Selection. Let's go to my desktop and I'll call this Ball FBX. And let me actually export it as an FBX. If I can find it. There it is, right? Okay, so ball of BX and export selection. All right. Okay, time to get into Keyshot. Here we go. Okay, everybody. So we're in Keyshot 9 uh, Pro uh, to be exact, but I guess this will work in any version of Keyshot. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to File. We're going to go to Import. We're going to select our ball and open that and import that. Now, Here's our ball. Um, we need to choose a material for it. I want it to be somewhat textured, most likely. So let's see if we get something that will fit the build here. Uh, let's see, rubber, most likely. And uh, yeah, or maybe even leather that we can adjust, right? So let's try that because it should have a nice texture to it. So let's go and put the leather on here. And as we do that, we will need to tweak the scale of that quite a bit. So we're going to go into textures. And let's make that very small. Let's get in close here. I think that would work. Yeah. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to properties and I'm going to increase the roughness. And basically we're getting rid of the sheen a little bit. We can bump that up a little bit with the refractive index. And of course we need to change the color. So I'm going to double click on this and we're going to go in here and uh, let's change the diffuse color. So let's go in and push that towards orange and push that towards orange a bit more. Make that a bit darker and make it a little bit more like this. Yeah. And then hit OK. And then we've got that secondary color here that we need to bring up as well. But we're going to leave a little bit of color in there just to make it look a bit interesting. I think we need to get a little darker on that. Yeah, I think that would work. All right. And then for the center lines there, the black lines, let's go and use um, rubber and we'll use tire material and put that in there like that. Yeah. Then what we might want to do is kind of rotate the whole thing. And so we're going to go to uh, the ball in our scene. Use the move tool and I kind of want to see that position like that, right? And then maybe this looks like a good angle. Okay. Then let's play with the lighting. So we're going to go and um, look at a backdrop here, either white or this one. I think we're going to go with white. That's all right. So we got white, then our environment, we got a lot of things to choose from. I typically start off with this one. Yeah, it's too dark. Let me try a couple of these. Or maybe even a studio light setup. Let's do that. Let's see. Yeah, that will work. Okay. So we got that lighting. Then what we're going to do next is we're going to just go quickly through the settings here. So let's see. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. Lighting. Let's see. I'm going to go up here to lighting. We're going to do all of these. Yeah, it's good. Jewelry is usually a fairly complex one. 
Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Increase shadow quality, that's all okay. Increase the number of ray bounces, that's all okay. Then in environment, we can go in and uh, let's go to the HRI editor. We can add a pin if we want, and that will add some light and we can move that around. I think this looks okay. And yeah, overall it's looking fine, I think. Okay, let's go and hit render. So we're gonna go and turn on GPU. And there we are. Then we're gonna go to the render tab, GPU mode is on. Let's go to render here, uh, output, ball render on desktop, that's fine. Options, max samples is fine, and let's hit render. That's so fast. There you go. Okay, let's open that guy up in Photoshop. Okay guys, and there you have it. As you can see, it turned out okay. I think it did anyway. Um, as far as roundness is concerned, uh, you can increase the uh, mesh subdivision if you want it to be perfectly round. But as something that could be used, like say a prop or whatnot, I think it looks uh, pretty cool, right? So that's all there's to it, guys. If you've got any questions, as always, let me know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already. And keep in mind that if you're a member of my channel, you get a very cool perks, and I'll put a link below for that, right? Okay, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.